Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for joining me. Today I am happy to be part of the Spellbinders Holiday Blog Hop featuring lots of new collections for the Spellbinder shop. Today I get to play with a collection called A Sweet Christmas and it is adorable. It is by Sharon Soul, and I have three products here that I get to create some projects with today. This first one here is called Gingerboy Gingerbread Boy Garland. It is a cute little gingerbread, and Christmas time, I love gingerbread. So when I seen this, I was so excited. You get the base of the gingerbread boy, and there's lots of fun elements in this little package. You get some little waves. You get the little gingerbread space that you could die cut out either in the gingerbread or separately to do some paper piecing. There's a few elements you can add to his arms and then to his little feet. And then you get a little wave die, some stars, and some hearts. So it tends in this little set. I also get to play with this little set called Let, Let's Bake. I'm a baker, and so this had my name written all over it. You get a bowl, a little spatula, a little rolling pin, a little juicer, a couple spoons there. You even get a little egg, a grater, a measuring cup. And then you also get an oven mitt that I dropped. That's what took me so long to pick it up. Now for the third project today, I'm going to be playing with this little die set. It's called From Our Home to Yours. And it's a silhouette of a Santa, which is so cute. And he's holding up a little hot cocoa mug that has steam swirls coming out of it. He has his little Santa bag there. And then there's two sentiments. You get Merry Christmas. And then you also get the dies that say from our home to yours. So it, um, two full sentiments that are separate. So you can mix and match if you'd like. And there's also a little um, holly leaves with little berries. So we're going to jump and get started with our first project. I'm going to start off by die cutting out my little gingerbread man. And I'm just using some craft card stock here. He is on the full size too, so he's going to fit your card base pretty good, an A2 size card base. While I'm die cutting, I'm also going to cut out his little face inside the craft card stock. I'm just making sure he's lined up good. And there's a little wave swirl pattern that I'm going to be die cutting out, a few of those. I'm going to die cut out the elements for his arms and his legs and also the three little hearts there. Now, once I have everything die cut, I'm just going to remove everything everything here. That's, isn't he cute? I love his little happy face. He's so sweet. Okay, now to add elements... Oh, you know what? I'm going to give him a little bit of shading. I'm going to burn him. <laughs> I'm going to make my gingerbread a little bit toasty, so I'm going around his the edges of him with some uh, Distress Oxide ink. This is a vintage photo. And just going around the edge edges. That's how my gingerbread always turned out. It's a little bit overbaked. <laughs> now, I flip my gingerbread over and I add some scotch tape behind his face. This way, when I inlay the pieces for his face, which I'm actually going to die cut out right now because I didn't do that earlier. I'm just going to grab my Platinum 6 and run that through on a piece of white cardstock. But the tape, the tape is going to actually help keep my little pieces here um, set on the inside of my gingerbread. Makes it really easy. Now once we have all his... Um, face characteristics put together. We're going to add his feet and his little hands, the little accents there. And I'll go ahead and add the three hearts as buttons on my little gingerbread. Now I, I cut out everything in white, but if you wanted to use pattern paper you could. But I did want to add a little bit of color. So I'm going to grab my Copic markers. I'm just going to use a few colors. I'm going to use the green to color in his buttons and you should probably wait until the glue dries but I'm not doing any shading just going to go over it with a solid color and then I'm going to rosy up his cheeks with some a pink and I'll go over his little arm decorations 
with my pink marker and then for his feet I debated on using a different color but I just went with the pink I love the the soft colors of gingerbreads there's you can make a bold color gingerbread but I like the soft colors <laughs> now I grabbed some pattern papers from my stash cut them into a couple strips and the little wavy decorative element that is actually made to be put on your gingerbread I'm actually going to use it as a little scallop edge for my pattern paper I think it creates a real softness and it almost a vintagey look and so I thought this was the alternate way to use that I'm just going to trim off the excess and I did die cut out a couple more and we'll do the same thing to the reverse side just using that leftover piece there now just using my tape runner I'm going to adhere that to my green pattern paper there and it should fit it just beautifully lovely now I have this embossing folder for my stash everything I use today too guys I'll leave links below in the description area but it's a brick pattern embossing folder and I thought that would make a great background so I just die cut it out and um, I die cut it on a panel that I trimmed down to be slightly smaller than my card base I'm just going to place my pattern paper towards the lower part of my panel and then we're going to flip our gingerbread over and go ahead and pop him up with some foam tape we're going to place him kind of wonky on this panel we're going to go ahead and tape him down to an A2 size card base. It's the top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. Lovely. Okay, for my sentiment, I grabbed a stamp set also from uh, Spellminders. It has peace, joy, and love on there, and I thought I love the font of these two stamps, and so I thought the peace, love, and joy would go really good because there's little hearts in between each of those. It kind of matched the little hearts on my gingerbread. I'm just going to stamp my sentiment on some white cardstock. And using my paper trimmer, I'm just going to trim it down. I'm actually going to create kind of like a tag with it. So I'll block off the left side, and then I'll angle the corners off. Just create, We're going to create kind of like a faux tag. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add some foam adhesive behind there and place that on my, my card base there. Now, I have a holly berry die, two of them, well, the, the holly leaves and the berry leaves. And I'm going to use my pattern paper to cut out a couple little holly berry accents. I thought that would be perfect at the end of my little tag. So just using my tape runner, I'll adhere the holly leaves. And then I'll use a piece of foam tape to pop up my little berries right on the end there. Okay, now I have some twine, white twine for my stash. I'm just going to double it up and tie a bow. We'll trim down the tails, and then I'm going to place this bow in the center of those little holly berries. Just using a glue dot to secure it down. Lovely. Now to give my little gingerbread man a little bit of sparkle, I'm going to take some Nouveau Glitter Drops. These are White Blizzard. They're real pretty iridescent glitter. They're my favorite. <laughs> I use them a lot. But I'm going to go over his cheeks and his little arm accents. The little green hearts as the for the buttons and then his little feet accents and the holly berries. Just to give it a little bit of sparkle. And then I decided while I'm at it, I'm going to grab some Simply White Nuvo Crystal Drops. And I'm going to give some dimension to his little eyes. And also that little frosting piece right on top. <laughs> and that is my first project. Kind of vintagey gingerbread man. I think I love the way it turned out. So cute. Here's some close-ups. Okay, now I also want to share with you what you could do with this die. Since it is on the larger side, if you take your a card pre-folded pre card base, place your gingerbread man so the top of it's slightly overhanging 
run that through your die cut machine it will create a real fun tag I guess that's why it is called the gingerbread boy garland tag you could create garland with it oh that'd be cute too attaching a little ribbon to his arms but this creates a real fun tag now I had decorated it kind of fancied it up a little bit added some lace and some ribbon to the top of it and the sentiment there but that's just an example of what you could do with that die I, th I just if you love gingerbread you're gonna love this die now for project number two we're gonna do some baking without it having to do any dishes <laughs> so I'm taking these elements here the little spatula the, the spoon measure cup and then the rolling pin I'm gonna die cut those out with white cardstock and then for the little bowl I'm going to grab some silver and gold foiled cardstock and I'm going to cut out um, one each of, of those. So we have two bowls. Now once my elements are all done, we're going to do some gluing down. So I'm going to actually take the silver bowl and I'm going to attach it to the gold. These little pieces were actually the centers the inside of the bowls but I'm going to use one as a bowl plate and so I just layered it together using my glue and we're going to add our gold bowl right inside kind of a little bit wonky <laughs> okay next we're going to doctor up our little images here I'm just going to use my punch out any excess here my little tool now to color in my rolling pin, I'm just going to grab my blending tool that I use for my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink and just do a little bit of shading on the edges, leaving the, the center white. So that's my rolling pin. And then I'm going to do the same thing to my spoon. And then for my measuring cup, I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight with a gray marker just do a little bit of shading you don't need very much I wanted to kind of wanted it to seem like it was glass bowl for my spatula I want to bring in a little bit of pink so I'm going to do a little shading with the light pink then I'm going to add a little bit of dark pink on the edge here just to give it a little bit of dimension I'll take that gray marker and then I'm going to add a little bit of gray to the bottom of my spatula and then that's all the coloring we're going to do for those. Trying to figure out how we want to place it. I know I want the spatula out, hanging out of the top of the bowl. And I did end up adding the, the spoon to my silver bowl. But I die cut out a background and I embossed it with that same embossing folder that I had used for card uh, my project for card one. And then I'm taking a piece of craft paper. I just angled it off a little bit. And I'm going to add a piece of this um, pinkish reddish pattern paper to the very top of that. I'm just going to use my glue. I thought it needed a little bit more, so I'm going to grab a strip of the green pattern paper and add that over the seam just to give it a more clean look. Now we're going to stamp our sentiment. So I'm going to grab my Merry Christmas. I'm just going to stamp it in black ink right in the center. I think this, the font on this is just so pretty. Lovely. We're going to use the tape runner, add some tape behind here, and we'll attach that to the bottom of our panel. Any excess hanging over, we're just going to trim off. And then we get to arrange our little elements. We're going to make a little baking cluster. <laughs> We're going to pop up our little bowls and our measuring cup. The rolling pin I just glued down to my panel. And then I did decide to add that same holly berry die that we had used. And I thought I was just missing something. So I grabbed my holiday buttons. And I thought this would be the cutest. I have a little element that looks like a little mini gingerbread cookie cutter. I thought that would look cute right off to the side of my card here. So I just wrapped some twine around there 
and then I'm going to use a glue dot to secure that and I'll place that in the center of my little berries there. And then I think that looks so cute. I'm just going to reposition my little measuring cup. I didn't like where it was. <laughs> okay, bells and whistles. I'm going to add a few of my white sequins here. Just for a little bit of sparkle. And that finishes off my second project. I love this little die set. It's so cute. If you were to give this with a little, maybe a box of cookies, I think that would be adorable. <laughs> But here's some close-ups. Okay, now for my third project today, we're going to use the, uh, some gold foiling and then some silver foiling. And I'm going to die cut out the silhouette of the Santa and then his little Santa bag there. And then I did die cut out with white cardstock the Merry Christmas. I did it two times and I'm going to layer them together. I wanted this to have a little bit of stability because a little bit of it is going to be overhanging. So when you um, double it up or even triple it up, it adds a little bit of stability to, to your sentiment. Okay, now I die cut out, or actually I embossed another panel using that same brick um, embossing folder. I thought we'd create kind of like an ensemble set. <laughs> and it was I just really liked that, that brick background. But I used some pattern paper here. The green one has some holly berries on it, and then this one has some poinsettias. I just cut out some thin strips. And to give this a little bit more of a vintage look, I'm going to add some lace that I just grabbed from my stash. I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the center of my green pattern paper. lovely okay now we're going to add our Santa and our little Santa bag we're going to layer them both together so using my tape runner I'm just going to adhere my Santa bag to my Santa next I'll adhere my Merry Christmas directly to my Santa and overlapping on the Santa bag also and here's where you can see the C on my Christmas kind of overhung a little bit. So when I doubled it up, it I wasn't too worried about um, it losing its shape there. We'll go ahead and add our Mary just using some glue. Okay, we're going to flip this over. And we're going to add some foam squares behind here. Pop it up so it gives our panel a little bit of dimension. Lovely. Now we're going to flip this over. Using my tape runner, we're going to adhere this to an A2 size card base. All my projects, all my cards today are A2 size card bases. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half inches. But that's going to go in the center. And then I thought it needed just a little bit more. So I have some silver, like a rope weaved twine for my stash. I just tied a bow with it. Now this kind of holds its shape. I don't know if there's wire in there, but um, it's on the thicker side. But I'm just going to adhere that using a glue dot. I'm kind of going to tuck the, the tail of this one underneath my Santa and the little Santa bag. And we'll just trim off these, this side. Kind of curl it up a little bit. And then for a little bit of sparkle, I'm going to take some more of my Nouveau Glitter Drops and add a few dots all around that pattern paper just for a little bit of sparkle. And that finishes off that card. Here's a close-up. So this is a Sweet Christmas collection by Sharon Sowell, and it's available over at Spellbinders. It is so fun and so cute. Um, if you like what you see and you're interested in it, um, I'll leave links below in the description area. And I encourage you guys to join the blog hop. Um, there is a prize that's going to be given away, so check out the Spellbinder blog um, for details on that. But thanks so much for joining me, guys. I wish you a fantastic day, and we will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.